In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Polaroid Go. We're going in depth, real world use on this. We're gonna be talking pros, cons, who's this camera for, and more. Roll that intro. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much? Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. Before we get started, if you guys want to see a full unboxing of this camera, I have done so already during one of my live streams. I'll leave a link for it down below if you want to learn about what this all came with. But this video is the actual use of this camera, side-by-side -side comparisons, and so much more. So without further ado, let's dive right on in to the Polaroid Go camera. And up first, let's talk about the camera specs. First thing you may notice, it's kind of small. Here is the Polaroid Now versus the Polaroid Go. There is a bit of a size difference. Uh, and does size actually matter in this case? Well, uh, we're gonna determine that in this video as well. Uh, it's really pocketable. That is really cool. Uh, it is small. It's about the size of your fist, which is pretty cool, I think. It's plastic, but since it's smaller and condensed, it feels a really durable, a little bit more so than the bigger camera. This feels hollow. Uh, and I mean, it has to be hollow because that's how the camera operates. Maybe that'll be another video, but this is a lot more condensed. It feels really, really sturdy. To load the camera, it's a lot different than a typical Polar camera. Yeah, load it right into the front and close it. Uh, this loads more like an Insex camera, right uh, from the bottom, uh, which is fairly unique, but they had to do that to get the size down. It has a plastic lens, uh, just like all Polar cameras for the last 30 years or so. Uh, there hasn't been a glass lens uh, camera since I believe the 90s web on the SLR 690. So the other thing about this camera is the the angle of the lens. It's a 35 millimeter equivalent. So that's actually pretty wide um, when you take a photo, like you take a group shot, like a selfie, arm's length away, you still got quite a bit of space. Like here in my, here's me and my buddy, little, my buddy Caesar that I met up and down in San Diego. That's just at arm's length. And here's one I took of me in the studio uh, right before I started recording. And this one is at arm's length as well. You can kind of get an idea of just how uh, much room you got. And also this is without the flash. This is just with my studio lights. So the focusing distance on this is actually pretty good. It's a foot and a half away. Anything closer than that is gonna be a little out of focus, but just remember arm's length away and you're gonna be just fine. Shutter speed is 1 300th of a second up to one second. So there's, it has two f-stops on here and it's f12 to f52. So on a super bright sunny day, it's gonna be at the 52 and in a darker situation, it's gonna be f12. It has a flash a built in, which is actually pretty bright. It's really nice. Now, one really cool thing about this camera, it has somewhat of a selfie mirror. Uh, right through the viewfinder, when you're looking through down the barrel, uh, it doubles as a one-way mirror, kind of, uh, and it was, it's reflective, so you can actually frame up your shots, which uh, it's actually extremely accurate. It has an automatic light meter. There is no manual control over this camera at all. Um, it does have a few extra settings though, however. It has a self timer mode and a double exposure mode and a flash on and off switch. Uh, there is no tripod mount because that's you know where the film door goes, so no tripod mount. And it has a charging board because there is a battery in here. It has a 750 milliwatt hour battery, uh, so that's you know decent sizing. I don't know how many you can actually fire because uh, film is still somewhat scarce. They're only shipping out certain amounts. You can only order certain amounts at a time. So it's really hard to gauge at the moment uh, how many you can do. I've shot three boxes through this um, and uh, I'm still on the same full charge that I have. So it definitely lasts a long time. Now with a small camera like this, you would think that the viewfinder is really difficult to see through, but in reality, it's actually better than even the larger cameras. When you look through this one, the whole, quite small. This one, you look through it, it's quite large, which was definitely surprising. Uh, and so, yeah, it's really nice. It's pretty fun to shoot with. And that is pretty much the full specs of this camera. There is not a whole lot to it, but yet it still packs a good punch. I have really enjoyed shooting with this camera more so than I thought. I thought it was just gonna be a gimmicky thing that I'll never shoot again after I make this video, but that's not the case. Uh, I will definitely be using this fairly regularly. Now, let's head into the field and actually see how this thing stacks up, go over some pros and some cons, and yeah, we'll meet back here in just a minute. All 
All right, so today we're gonna talk. Oh, shh, you can't see me at all. Hang on. Welcome to my hotel room. I'll be your host. Just another Chris. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Polaroid Go. Yeah, I'm so excited. And I'm on the go right now. Um, I'm mean, currently in San Diego, California, uh, seeing some friends, doing some other things. So uh, while I was here, I wanted to shoot with this guy. I've already shot some photos. This thing's way more fun than I thought. It's a little crooked. Don't have a tall enough tripod. But anyway, I digress. We were actually going to be meeting up with my friend Caesar. He uh, is part of my documentary. Uh, he is in it. I do some interviews with him. He introduced me to a lot of people. And while I was down here, I wanted to meet up with him. We're going to go do a little shopping. I missed some stores that I wanted to go to the last time I was here, back in January. And so I'm going to shoot some photos with him and this. And yeah, you guys get to hang out with us today. So let's go shoot some photos, shall we? All right, here in San Diego with Caesar. Hey, what's up? Uh, you showing me around downtown San Diego, which I've been to San Diego multiple times, but I've actually never been downtown before. Kind of shocking. That's crazy. It's like, it's a must. You have to be there, especially right here. We have Peco Park up ahead. Right. There's tons of restaurants right here. <laughs> like it's what 11 in the morning if you wanted to get wasted right now, like there's a ton of places. <laughs> Quite the adventures today. Uh, so while I was out here, Wanted to shoot some photos with the go. So let's get to it. All right, so guys, I kind of failed you. I was supposed to film a lot more, but I didn't. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yeah, because I'm on vacation. I thought I'd squeeze in work if I could. Um, I'm still going to be shooting. I still got three more days here. Uh, didn't get to shoot much with, with Caesar here, unfortunately. But he's a lovely chauffeur. Chauffeur? Chauffeur. 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 Um, so thank you. I appreciate you driving me around today. Anytime. I told you, anytime you're in San Diego, I'm your guy. All right. Here's my hotel. This is the In-N-Out. I might as well take a photo of In-N-Out, right? It's California. Kind of have to. I have with this right as of right now uh, and that is the extremely slow shutter when after you push the button it takes a few seconds for it to actually engage and take a photo I don't know if it's just mine uh, but that is frustrating I've wasted a couple of shots and since film for this is uh, nowhere to be found in person uh, and also sold out on the website definitely don't be wasting shots uh, luckily I bought two boxes so I can afford to sacrifice a couple shots I feel every time I find a weird, creepy alley, I need to go shoot my band photo. <laughs> so I just want to get a couple of the negatives out of the way. Loading this camera is interesting, especially if you're out and about, uh, like I am right now, I'm just doing kind of a street photography walk. And loading it is tricky. If it's raining or if there's dust in the air or I guess mostly any other condition, the mirror is exposed right when you open the uh, back of the film door and so you have to be very careful putting in the next thing and pulling out your old pack because something could get inside crack the mirror scratch it get water in there who knows so you kind of have to be careful when you load this camera out in public and before I left I kind of wanted to do my 
initial wrap up of in the field testing with this thing. It's just so convenient to use. I've been walking around in shorts. They're not necessarily cargo shorts, but this fits in the pocket and no problem. I can just walk hands free. I'm not used to that. If you are walking and shooting multiple shots in a row, now let's say you're gonna take a photo and you don't want the flash on. Uh, so you turn it off and you take the photo. Now you don't turn off the camera. You wanna go and take another photo with the same settings. You have to remember every time you take the photo, the flash resets to on every time. So you have to manually turn it off, which can be super annoying. <laughs> another thing is exposure compensation uh, or the lack of meaning it doesn't have one. Uh, so you're kind of at the mercy of the light sensor, which is pretty good. It doesn't do a terrible job. Uh, if you're gonna be shooting on a bright sunny day, you can almost forget about seeing nice blue skies though in your photos. It's going to be pretty like washed out, overexposed. Uh, so is, this camera isn't necessarily meant for that. It's kind of just for closer, you know, interactions with people, but the photos are still not horrible. You're still gonna get some, you know, decent results, but it might not be what you're used to or accustomed to shooting. So one thing to mention about this camera, it is $99, which could be a con, which a lot of you guys that I've been talking to you about this camera over in the Discord, uh, that has been a major, major deal breaker for this camera. This camera is $99. This camera, the Polaroid now, full-size Polaroid camera, is also $99. So why would you go for the smaller one versus the bigger one? Well, there's some cases to be made for that. Uh, this doesn't fit in your pocket. This fits in your pocket. And the best camera to have is the one that's with you, right? But also, more importantly, the film. The film cost is way cheaper. Like, way cheaper. You could get two packs of film for the same price as one pack of film on the larger size. Uh, they're only sold in double packs at the moment. So you get 16 photos for $19.99. Uh, and that is pretty awesome. And inside every single film pack, uh, you get a sticker dot pack. Basically you stick it on the back of your photo and then you can stick it on whatever you want. Uh, it's a nice way to display these, put them on the fridge, put them on magnets, whatever you want to do. It's pretty cool. And it comes with every pack. Neat little touch. Now a huge complaint of this camera that everyone in my Discord and everyone in my viewers during my live shows have complained about, and that is the size of the pictures. You guys are like, yeah, it's cheaper on the film side, but just look at it, look how tiny that thing is. It's like the size of a stamp. And yeah, you would be correct. There's a few things I think you're overlooking here, and that is, what well, one being your diehard instant photography shooters. And for the diehards, this might not be for you. This is really to get people in to what we like to do. And the more people that join what we like to do, the more Polaroid and other instant photography companies can flourish and make more stuff for us. Does that make sense? Because there's been a resurgence in the last five years or so of this, so there's not a ton of real good products out there that's coming out that's new. There's a few things, but you have to pay a serious premium for. And the more successful this hobby becomes, the more companies are gonna be able to put out good stuff. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. But another major point that people tend to overlook is most people share their photos digitally. They're on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. So the process of doing that is you take your photos and you scan them into your computer and then post them online. Well, take a look at these photos right here. They're the same photo. One of them is taken with my SX70 and the other one is taken with a Polaroid Go. Now SX70 photos are one, standard size or lot larger and the Polaroid Go is a lot smaller. But once you scan these into the computer, can you actually tell the difference on the size? I'm gonna leave that one up to you guys because maybe if you can't tell a difference and you're only sharing digitally, not really in person, why not save some money and go with the Go and the film is a lot cheaper? That is something else that is to be considered because clearly, there is a size difference in person. If you want to share your photos in person, then yeah, maybe this is a lot nicer for you. It's more of a premium now though, because this is a lot cheaper, but scanning them into the computer, you might not notice a difference. But at the end of the day, photography is just another creative way to express yourself. It's art. And you can actually do some unique things with this camera that you can still do with, you know, on the larger size for sure, but it's maybe a little bit different. And this is what I'm talking about. 
something like this. You can display your photos in a smaller frame and have more going on. You can still do this with Polaroid, but you can probably only fit maybe four photos in there. Uh, maybe you're, you're on a trip like I was. I was in California and here are some of the photos that I took while I was there. I could frame this up on the wall and I think it looks pretty cool. You can go bigger too, make a giant poster with all these photos. Um, I just think it's a different, unique way to use this camera. And there's a lot of other fun ways that you can use this camera as well. So where this thing kind of falls short is shooting landscapes or buildings or just like things like that really. Um, it's really meant for things that are closer up, you know, friends at parties, animals maybe, anything that's really kind of semi-close to the frame, that is where this camera is going to shine. I would go in the larger size if you're trying to take, you know, landscape shots or buildings, things like that. They tend to get lost in the frames of this size. Now, I touched on this earlier in the video, but this is a good camera for street photography. It's small, it's kind of discreet. Um, it's just a little slow on the shutter. So if you're trying to take something that's just happening kind of fast, this kind of struggles a little bit, but it's really great if you're just taking pictures of stationary things. And I don't know if it's just mine. Again, I want to emphasize that, but when I push the button, it does take a half a second or so to fire the shot and I have wasted some photos but i would still recommend it for walking around the streets if you're into that sort of thing so who is this camera really for um i would say it's a great way to get introduced into polaroid uh, younger generations or people just want to test the waters this is a great entry point but even with that said if you already shoot with the larger stuff this is still an awesome tool to have in your quiver because it fits in your pocket it fits in a bag doesn't take up hardly any space film is cheap but it's really nice for people that want to just get started in the polaroid world because it is a sweet little operating camera <laughs> there's nothing really more i can say about it it's definitely going on my official approved list that is for sure at the date of this recording of the video the camera is only being sold on polaroid's website same with the film which that is frustrating because if you run out, you can't just get it. You have to order and wait for it to show up. And they're only allowing uh, like two boxes at a time, which is still a lot of uh, film, but it's kind of frustrating for people that want to stock up on stuff and be able to shoot a lot of photos. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. I don't know if they're going to change that. I would, I would assume they would. I have a feeling this will end up in stores, but right now <laughs> at the day of the recording on this video, it's still somewhat of a scarce thing. And before we wrap up, I want to show you something cool. Um, I released a book uh, not too long ago, and I've been waiting to release uh, this announcement, which is a live book reading of the book. We'll just go over it, talk about it. I'm actually going to be giving one of these away and announcing um, how to get one for yourself. Basically, the non-autograph, non-inserts, fun stuff, just the basic book paperback versions of this. And that is coming next weekend, May 22nd, 2021. Live book reading, we'll hang out, answer questions. So if you got one, uh, that means you could hang out and you know, ask questions about this. And if you didn't get one, you can look about all the cool stuff that's in here. And some cool stuff, fun stories, things like that. So you have that to look forward to live stream here on Just Another Chris YouTube channel next weekend, May 22nd. Look for the announcement with the official time because that's still being determined, but it's gonna be on that day, probably like early afternoon sometime. But anyway, enough about that. I know this video was anticipated by you guys for so long, uh, so hopefully this was helpful. If you found it in any way, any way helpful that is, please leave a comment below. Let me know, let's chat and join the Discord. Let's hang out, let's become friends. Let's chat about some really cool things. Link is in the description below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.